Hello. Welcome back to Arknights. It's been a little while since I recorded again, um, but I'm hopefully going to record all the videos for this week today. So, I'm going to be wearing the same shirt for the next few days. Well, days. But I'm going to record it all basically today so that I can get a video out every day, hopefully. Um, welcome back to Babel, though. This is going to be fun. Um, I left it off on a tutorial, so let's see what the tutorial is for. Whoa. Structure Doberman instructions for further action. I'm fine. Let's get started with today's training mission. Be wary of hollows in the ground. The nomadic city of Kazdel is far from structurally sound and employs numerous tra trans transverse plates to fix itself together. Operators cannot be directly deployed to these transverse plates and will need operators deployed on regular tiles to provide assistance. Wow. It's a while up here. Dr. Doberman, or Dr. Instructor Doberman. Uh, are you okay? You look, I'm fine. Begin the exercise. She's scared of heights. Oh, oh right, I forgot that he slides fast. Hostile spotted, moving at high speed toward the objective point. Jessica, stay calm. Okay, so Jessica goes I there. sleep oh, no. on the job. Bruce, okay. Ah! Bruce is in position, proceed with, what? Proceed to your designated coordinate. Boy, the left. Ah. Right. Oh. Sure. Okay. Here I am. This is a stabilizer chain instructor. The shattered transverse plates are found all over Kazdel. Without stabilizer chains, operators won't be able to engage in combat. Stabilizer chains are custom equipment for improving combat conditions when an operator is deployed to a transverse plate. The last operator deployed within the, a certain range will throw one stabilizer chain to them, ensuring stability. So I assume that eventually an enemy will be able to break these chains. The enemies seem to be slowed by the chain. That's right, stabilizer chains can also apply special effects on enemies as a form of defense. But remember, an operator can only hold up two stabilizer chains at once. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. I'll definitely prove myself this time. Alright, the next exercise should be improved combat. I guess I'll retreat now as planned. Cruz, wait, we're still linked. Cruz, Jessica, stay close. Wait, wait, Cruz, Jessica, stay close. Remember what the exercise is about. Always be mindful of your teammate status. Why does it have to be so high? <laughs> Team press, five more seconds. Now, based on what you've learned, what should you do when your enemy or teammate is in danger? I know. You didn't immediately fall into the transverse plate when you lost your stabilizer chain. Instead, you gained the status unsteady. Wait, what? Do I place her here? In position. Hold on, Fang. Okay. So she won't, like, die. Take but that. it's definitely not... Oh, never mind. <laughs> She'll eventually die. Okay. Mission accomplished. We've accomplished our objective as planned. Well, that was loud. Okay, let's go into BB2. Start. Start. I like this music, actually. 26 years ago. Wasserland, Lithin Lithania. How do you like this piece? Like an energetic child waking from slumber, rushing out the door to enjoy the fruits of life to the fullest. It was the... It was a first who wrote it. What the fuck? Who inspired by his holiness's visit to Wasserland when he was still a messenger for a Laterano. The young and enthusiastic future pontiff told the children about all that he has seen. The ocean that Li Iberia watches over. The city of Athenius, where Minoan myth and machination exists in equal measure. And a passing mention of Kazdel, the city of Sin, the whereabouts of which are unknown. The Kruffoist. 
okay, you're gonna have to tell me how to say that, was there, and he was fascinated by His Holiness's descriptions. The first draft of this work was in fact written at the time, but the curve first was not satisfied. Even after many years of revisions, a final draft has yet to be completed until recently when our scouts located the elusive nomadic city of the devils and sent back photos. Using upon the enormous tracks left behind by the city, the car first found the missing element in the music, ferocity. With that, the work was complete. You found Kazdel? Yes, the Kurfurst. Kurfurst was astonished to find that the destiny of the work was intertwined with the city. I understand the reason the Kurfurst chose to present this piece on the eve of my return to Laterano. However, unlike his predece predecessors, His Holiness, fuck, His Holiness has no intentions of initiating offensive action against Sarkaz. He is not interested in putting the sinless on trial without cause. I'm afraid I must disappoint the Kurfurst. Kurfurst. I keep yawning, it's so annoying. The city itself is of no concern to the Kurfurst. He is more interested in His Holiness's op opinion of the peace. Please send His Holiness the Kurfurst warmest regards. Okay, is that the last time that fucking word's gonna be said? We have a response from Surakuza. Surakuza. <laughs> Only a few of the family famigli. What the famigli? Is that a race? That's probably a race here. Have agreed to participate in the action. Their men with will rendezvous with the fleet soon. I can't believe Lotterino. Lotterano rejected us. Inform the Surakusans to move quickly. We must pop mop up the city before the other Christ. Can react. Take Kazdel before the other Kofurston can. <laughs> what is that? I've, ne I've never seen that pronounced, the U with the two dots above it. Do not repeat the same mistake we made at Gaul and miss another opportunity. Scar Market, Kazdel. Cyclops Man. I like Lithanians. You always bring so much business, and it's smart that you disguise yourself as a prisoner in the smuggling crew, rather than flying the banner of a messenger. Now tell me what you want, before I lose my patience. Trade, muscle for hire, intel, the scar market has everything you need. Cooperation, esteemed leader. We don't have a fixed price for cooperation. Are you sure your core first can pay my price? Don't you want to know what we're asking for first? There's nothing that money cannot buy here, Caprene. Oh, nervous envoy. I would be. Oh shit. That's annoying. I'd be uh, uh, nervous too if someone that's ten feet taller than me is like talking to me. What about Kaz? Oh, I assume he's ten feet taller, but go on. The core first wants you to sabotage the city's propulsion system. Nothing else. The down payment is in the safe that you took from the cam caravan. The car first will discuss the rest of the payment with you in Castell. I admire your boldness. Let me express my good faith with a little glimpse into the future for you. Nomadic city of Castell. Castell. Take your things and scram, Lithanian. Are you trying to poison me? These are just suppressants. You'll need them on the battlefield. The warships that surround us came from Lithanian. Outsiders like you must have led them here. I don't have an explanation. I know you're taking your son with you into battle. Why would you do that? You could use the medicine. Keep your hands off my son. That's lucky. Good luck. That's what it was. What's the commotion? Are you out of your mind? She's a battle doctor. Babel Doctor. Are you okay? I'm fine. He wasn't really trying to hurt me. Hmm. <laughs> Good luck. You married a Babel woman, and now you've become a shill for the invaders. They'll be the death of you, I guarantee it. Many of us are also pained by the impending war. We requested to join you on the front lines. Lunatics. 
Who knows what schemes you have on the front line? You'll get yours at the in the end. Uh oh, you get yours in the end. Give me the medicine. I'll distribute it. They're ready to leave. They are ready to leave. Go meet up with them. Who's them? I'll take care of things here. Good luck, your son. I didn't let him leave. If the Lithanians want to force us into a catastrophe, it's safer for him to be in the lower level shelters in the city. Relax, doctor. People have made it through catastrophes in the past. Maybe we'll have, you know, good luck. I doubt it. That's not the theme of this game. <laughs> the furnace has burned for more than a century. War, catastrophe, migration, exile. All the suffering since the Tika's era has not extinguished the hatred of the revenants. The Sarkaz have been many Kaz have seen many Kazdels through the ages. The memory of yesterday may be unrecognizable by tomorrow. But the Soul Furnace has been a constant for this generation of Sarkaz. Home is where the Soul Furnace is. Kazdel. The furnace has not burned like this for many years. I can hear the cries of the revenants even from here. Soon, the city will charge headlong into a catastrophe. All we need to do is hold out until Nezalem's reinforcements arrive, until Kazel once again passes through the catastrophe. They thought we could cower. We would cower. They tried to assume our thoughts with their conception of common sense. It was so 170 years ago, and it is so now. Arrogant and laughable fools who never took the time to truly understand us. What fate do you think awaits the city, Theresis? To be honest, the chances that it survives are slim. Kazil was mobilized the last time it braved a catastrophe. It took us a decade just to get it moving at full, full speed again. I got a cramp in my leg that hurt really bad. And the forests of crystals in the mines and on the walls would never be removed, ruining years of our plans for the city. I don't know if the city can survive another ordeal like that. Much less one that's even worse. Good luck rarely comes twice. And I believe in this city, Theresis. Not because of luck, but because we built this city, and I won't give up on it. The story of this city does not end here, Your Highness. I may not be able to see its future clearly, but there's one thing I can say for sure. The city continues to exist into the distant future. No one can say, however, if it will be a sanctuary of hope or a ghost city of the dead. Skarai, have you not grown tired of this ambiguous words of your kind? And need I remind you that no amount of mercenaries can ensure your safety in this city? There's no deceiving your highnesses, of course. Kazel's open, doors are open to every sarcasm, but you better have a good reason to set foot in the city with your mercenaries at a time like this. I made an offer most difficult to refuse. I was made an offer most difficult to refuse, which obliged me to enter the city to seek an audience. What is it that you're carrying? This, something insignificant. Oh, I mean, someone. Lithanians wanted me to sabotage Kazdel. I've been away from my kin for many years, but as your highness said, Kazdel is the root of all Sarkaz. So, I felt that I had to deliver this Lithanian with my own hands in order to prove my innocence. What are you thinking? Exactly as I have said. What can I possibly hide from the King of Sarkaz? But if you're not interested in my gift of good faith, this music is so intense that I see no need to carry it with me anymore. It's heavy after all. Casually cast the bag into the furnace, where it is incinerated in an instant, without a sound. The furnace is always an impressive sight, no matter how many times one sees it. Your Highness, need not pity him. He, he should have foreseen the risks when he approached the Scar Market. I trust Lithanian was not miserly with its terms. It's simple, Your Highness. I prefer immediate payment over empty promises. But more importantly, I don't work with the losing side. Are you predicting our victory? It wasn't I who saw it. It was the Cyclops who left the prophecy a thousand years ago. I'm simply betting that Your Highness is are the protagonists of that prophecy. Regardless, the safest business in the, of the, for the Scar Market is with your highnesses. It would keep business flowing for at least the next 50 years or so. Is that not so, your highnesses? You're clever. Prophecy doesn't bring victory, but we can. Bring your mercenaries. We're moving out.
to battle! Jar! The crowd stirs. The Sarkaz procession leaving the city is quiet, except for the occasional clang of weapons and equipment. Their silence is rooted in the knowledge of the fate that awaited them beyond the city's gates. They wrap banners torn from the walls around their waists, or clutch originium spikes chopped from the streets as makeshift weapons. Each has their own ritual to remember the city that they may never return to. Oh. Mom, Dad, where are you? Dad! Mom! Right? <laughs> People really need to wash their kids. They can't be allowed to run wild. What a bitch! Ow. Careful. Who are you? This seems very detailed. Both of them seem very detailed for just, like, a lost child. Thank you. Where did you come from? Why are you also leaving the city? You'll fall if you're not careful. I'm looking for my mom and dad. Are you going out too? Yes, I'm going to the battlefield. Are you looking for your mom and dad there too? Can I come with you? No, I'm by myself. Why are you going out then? Because I don't want to hide in the city. I want to fight the people who are bringing... They're doing bad things to us. That's what my parents told me before they left. I want to fight too, but mom and dad won't let me go. I tried to sneak out and got a beating when they found out, but I don't want <laughs> to be away from mom and dad. We'll go together then and find your mom and dad. But there will be a lot of bad people out there. Are you scared? You're not scared. Mom and dad aren't scared. I'm not scared either. The disheveled child pumps his fist to show courage. But his trembling betrays him. The older child knows that the younger boy does not fully understand what is happening outside the city. But the young boy knows something simple but true. Bad guys should be chased away. Families should stay together. So he takes the boy's hand and joins the procession. How do we find your parents when we are out there? They work for Babel. They have a picture of a tower on their clothes. Babel. I know that place. Are you from Babel too? No, I grew up in the military com <laughs> commission institution. I guess I'm from the military commission. Military commission? What's that? A place that protects people. Just like Babel. What's your dad's name? Let's squeeze our way to the front. Maybe they're up ahead. Good luck. Good luck? Yes, he's good luck. Why are you laughing? Nothing. Let's shout his name. Maybe he'll hear you. Two children squeeze forward in the procession, holding each other's hands, calling out good luck with their tiny voices. A few heads turn and sigh when they see the young and naive faces. Good luck. Is that... It is what they all need. On an evening in the autumn... In the autumn of 1068, the music playing in the Kerfurst of Wasserlands... <laughs> of Wasserlands... Study was interrupted by the sound of frantic knocking on the door. The fleet that was pursuing the nomadic city of Kazdel had broken off its pursuit. Those crazy devils charged straight into a catastrophe. It's only by sheer good luck that they got away. Years later, the Kerfurst of Wasserland still, <coughs> still recounted the reason for his failure with the palpable disdain. I'm sorry I'm burping so much. I don't know what's up with my everything right now. I have heartburn and... Oh, it's been rough. Damn, not a lot of reading that time. Maybe in the second half. Permission to attack granted. Uh, yeah, let's go that. I don't like that though. Can your eyes keep up? Yeah. Zoom, zoom through this a little. Won't be afraid. Well, yeah, I can just probably play this double speed and not lose because it's such a low level mission right now. Oh, careful! Tail like a shooting star. That's what they say. She is so yep. nice to have, Pudding. Understood. It's so nice to have an AOE like that. It's not even AoE really, it's like a multi-hit. Well, this will be an AoE. Tail like a shooting star. That's what they say. Roger. 
I need to get my gun people back out. <laughs> you guys have a bunch of mages. Temporarily takes flight when blocked or facing a stabilizer chain for the first time. Defense is greatly reduced after landing. Oh, if it's just defense, then I have magic. Come on, let's pick up the pace. Arts, sorry, not magic. I'm right here to hide here someone crying. Oh, the first time they're blocked, they hop. Fuck. <laughs> Did I not read that right? <laughs> I thought. Damn it! <laughs> These evil spirits are too strong. I thought it was saying that they'll only block or jump over the chain, not not everything. <laughs> okay, let's retry that. <laughs> Oops. Maybe I should actually read what it says it does. Where fate guides. Operation commencing. Hmm? I mean, that's easy to take care of then. Like Degenbrecker here and Korra there. A new challenge. Attack. You can go do something else. I'll just keep Degenbrecker there for now. I don't need Korra yet. Tail like a shooting star. Um, that's what they say. Careful! Still mulling things, still soaking yourself in the past. What an ability. Come on, it let's still pick up surprises the pace. me every time. Uh huh. You have violated the fire regulation. Tail like a shooting star. That's <laughs> what they say. The kill circle. Come on. Like a shooting star. That's what they oh, that's say. great. When blocked or facing. Okay. You have violated the fire regulation. Get fucked, nerd. Still money to use your weapon to tell me who you are. Feels bad to lose your target, doesn't it? Oh no. Out of Wait the a way. Minute. Out of the way. What a motherfucker! I didn't realize one would come from that side. Ah, fuck you. How tiny we seem when we stand beside the tracks of the ship. Yes, it's the most impressive war machine. With their bodies as barriers, the Nashrair. Halted this advance at a tremendous cost. The Banshee's shrieks, powerful enough to shatter consciousnesses, consciousness, only managed to force the Lithanians to retreat below deck. If not for the catastrophe and the rough terrain in this valley, we're so far behind, and time is running out. Kazdal must have equally powerful weapons, if not more so. All our previous attempts have failed. A century ago, few believed we could build a nomadic city out of Kazdal. Yet, we did. If we are to catch up to them now, we cannot afford to take the conventional path. We have word from the Damazdi. The battleships on the horizon are slowing down. Have they given up? No. The current first orders were, the, to, con were to continue to the pursuit. <sighs> were to continue the pursuit, but the commander of the fleet ordered them to slow down. They're concerned about the catastrophes in the terrain. They've seen what happened to this ship. At the current rate, we can expect to engage them at dusk. We have bought enough time for Kazdal to retreat. Teresa looks back at the two storms entwining on the wastes, trying to catch a glimpse of the city. She sees nothing. Where is Kazdal now? Is it still moving through the storm? Are the people in shelters safe? The storms are converging. Our retreat has been cut off. A battle is inevitable, Teresa. I never thought I'd see you lose focus on the battlefield. What's that? That's... What is what? Whoa. What is that? 
The storm rages, the young taunting the old. The newborn storm slams into the dying storm to the war drums of thunder. Rolling air currents clash and combine between the two storms. Violence begets peace, and a passage appears where the storm converge. Lightning flashes and thunder cracks, a path through the storm. The storm. Let's go! Teresa, storm. the storm has given us a path. Those who survive through it will have another chance. We'll do it together. The Demosity Cluster passes their command, so every Zork has a president. The warriors see their leaders walk into the storm side by side and follow with no hesitation. The procession advances into the tempest, the strongest supporting the weak, the brave encouraging the fearful. Do you see that, Theresis? Within the roar of the tempest, they seem to hear the voice from the snowstorm in that childhood dream. They see the prophecy. The thin, cloaked figure turns at the sound of her voice and sees the storm pound procession. Theresis sees a child, mist gilded by the setting sun, shrouds her shoulders, rising and blending with the shrieking winds above. He takes off his gauntlet and stretches his bare hand into the mist. The mist dissipates, and his bloody hand is the stone blade that the child is holding. You are... Grab! What are you doing here? Home. Ha home. You came in. Home. The child wrestles the blade from Theresis' hand and points it again at Theresis and the procession behind him. There is no difference between man and beast to the child who grew up in the wastes. You want to kill me? Kill, kill you! Nobody taught her how to speak. She simply emulates the sounds made by those who pass by. Ow. Theresis? Theresis looks down silently at the thin figure. Let me show you how to hold a knife. You! The child hesitates for a moment before putting her knife in Theresa's outstretched hand. Me, you, bring me, bring me. Theresa gazes into Theresa's eyes. Prophecy. A sword to slay the regent king, a spear to pierce the royal ring. But they have never cared much for prophecy. Very well. Come with me. The home of the Sarkaz is not on the barrens. Do you have a name? Name me. From now on, you have a new name. Ascalon. Cool. Ten days later, the nomadic city of Kazdel. Kazdel. That was so cool. I love that art. The art in this game is always so good. Always so good. Look, Doctor. The furnace has been relit. Is it moving? The city's finally moving. Ouch. Careful, your wounds might open again. I got to go to the furnace. The furnace burns again, and Kazdel still sails. The Lithanians didn't manage to kill us. Oh, uh, I didn't mean you, Doctor. Come with me to see it. You deserve the same honor as the warriors who survived. But I'm not Sarkaz. Your people are heroes, too. Come watch their highness... Highnesses. <laughs> Come watch their highnies. Highnesses command the Goliath to support the leaning furnace. Watch the sparks fly when iron hammers beat upon the broken core. Hear the elegy of the Banshee, and the witness the final journey of fallen heroes when they enter the furnace to fuel it. This used to be an occasion that only the Sarkaz can see. I would love to go, but there are still a lot of wounded on the tree. Alright, tell you what. I'll bring back a couple bottles of booze and some fresh fruit, and we'll... You're not allowed to drink! And who the heck drinks in a medic tent? <laughs> Come on, it's just a little flesh wound. No means no. It's your oropathy that's the problem. Not to mention you're a terrible drinker. When did you ever see me drink? Oh, that time when I was drunk and came to you with a bunch of oropathy bombs. <laughs> Look, that was the only time in all these years. You can know I can afford booze. <sighs> I can't stop you. Why don't you go yourself? Won't be the same without you, but... I'm a Lithanian. And? You support those nobles who profit off a of war? I ran away from home because I couldn't stand them. There you have it, hmm? Wait a sec. You say you ran away from home? Were you noble? No. I was kind of thinking your equipment doesn't look like it's from Babel. Well, I won't speculate. It does nobody any good. 
so you can go on your own. I doubt the soldiers are on the front lines would get along with the Lithanian. When I saw the Lithanian string my father up by a sewer entrance to humiliate him, I never imagined I could befriend a Capernaum doctor here. Back then, the only people who saw who showed us any kindness were poor, or infected, or both. Right. Enough of the sad stuff. Be back in a jiffy. Don't run. You're going to open your wound. Seriously, since when did the sarcasm become so glib-tongued with me? I wonder if this counts as progress, Teresa. In any case, Kazdell is moving again. Things will get better. Back already? Well, it's about time you laid down. Oh, sorry, I thought you were someone else. Wait, your wounds are really bad. Nobody treated your arts burns? The Lithanians did it. My son's dead. They burned him alive before my very eyes. I was the only one who lived. At least let me see your wounds. They burned him alive. He was screaming. They used arts to hang him in the air for everyone to see. My brothers are dead. My captain is dead. The Lithanians stood on the high ground. They raised their staffs. Looked just like. With bloodshot eyes, the nearly deranged Sarkaz fixates at the doctor's staff abandoned in the corner. The emblem of the home she had left behind hangs from the staff like a reel. The doctor does not sense the hostility. She lifts his top to inspect the wounds, but feels a chill run up her spine. You're armed. Why didn't the guards check you? The light of the soul furnace lights up in the night sky above Kazdel like the midday sun. The fire's crackles echo like a mournful blow up growl. A somber, a somber tribute to the fallen who have become its fuel. All the Sarkaz set their eyes on the night, the sky that night. No one notices the light from one of the field hospital's windows go out. Your Highness? Why was I brought here? Oh yes, I have good news to report. What news? We won. We defeated the Lithanians, Your Highness. Me, my son, and the Blue, Bo Blo Blue Blood Squad. We won. We won. Are you not glad, Your Highness? Were we too slow? Blake, my son! Bring me the battle plan! Son! Son? Sorry, Your Highness. I don't know where my son went. You killed a doctor. One who has served Kazdel for years, treating orpathy patients. Hasdell? Doctor? No, you must understand, your highness. I only fight like Danians. <sighs> Have you read his emotions, Teresa? Pain, confusion, and madness. He has driven himself mad to escape the painful memories. He doesn't even know what crime he committed. The others do. The guards discovered him brawling with another Sarkaz amid shattered casks of liquor, which ignited and spread fire throughout the field hospital. All await the king's response, but you cannot be the one to do it. Leave it to me. Your Highness, General, I gave you all my all to defeat the Lithanians. Was I wrong to do so? Your Highness, take him away. His name is Logan, given to him by his mother, who was the one of the first Babel engineers. He hardly uses any arts, but the guards have been hypnotized by arts. Someone is behind this. The military commission will not investigate the Sarkaz for the sake of an outsider. Not after they've be just been through another ordeal. Neither should Babel. We should have no choice. We have no choice. The war has just ended. Babel should withdraw from the military and political affairs. At least for the time being. You know that's not what Babel is about in the first place. I do, but many don't. I'll define the parameters for Babel's activities. Babel, Babel's members will continue to serve Kazdell's medical, educational, and technological needs for them in this area. The military commission will continue to protect them, but we must make every effort to avoid conflict. There will come a day when the repressed hatred boils over, and even we will be powerless when that day comes. Kazdell is in urgent need of a change. We have to solve Virginian problems soon. But even that won't solve all our problems. I know. I've always known. Damn. There you are, Ascalon. 
what have you been what have you seen this in this day death people cry people die cry cry tears Theresa stretches out his hand a delicate stone knife lies in its palm knife my keep it safe warriors should treasure her weapon I'll teach you how to sharpen your blade but it's up to you to decide whom it cuts you're too impatient Theresa she's not ready to understand these things yet she has to understand sooner or later maybe but for now what we should do is give the frightened child a little bit of peace do you like this city Ascalon Compared to the armored general, Ascalon does not like the Sarkaz woman crushed before her. She seems to see through all her thoughts, leaving no secrets, a most dangerous thing in the wastes. But she cannot bring herself to be hostile to this gentle Sarkaz. I... No need to be afraid. You know I didn't. don't mean you any harm. Come, touch my horn. We're the same. Warm. Here. Warm me. Yes, warm. Hatred and killing are not the only way to solve a problem. Way probum? Teresa says no more. It is difficult for a girl who no has known nothing but the wastes to understand certain words, even with the help of the King of Sarkaz. She takes Ascalon's hand. It's like the wound on your palm. Weapons can't heal it. Only time and medicine. Ah, it's okay. I've cleaned your wound. You'll need to take care of it. Be patient. One day, you'll wake up and find that it doesn't hurt anymore. Yeah. That's cool. I like the characters in this one. Double classroom, Kazdel. No one here? We'll wait a little longer. It's not lesson time yet. They'll come. Look, it's Theresis. Casualty report from the military commission. There are many children, most of them students. The ones that lived, their parents are no longer willing to let the outsiders of Babel teach them. Plus, if memory serves, many of Babel's teachers have already left out of fear. You're troubling yourself too much with the trivial matters, Teresa. You need to rest. We still have to. I don't, I want to wait a little longer. Very well. Let's not leave. The classroom is eerily quiet. Teresa look, closes her eyes and recalls the students who used to be, fill the classroom. They said we can get potatoes from coming to school. I didn't understand that one, your highness. Do you have a simpler story? You said you went to the outside with mercenaries when you were our age? There's a sea between Sargon and Iberia? What's a boat? Why can't we go up on deck? Why would we throw up? Lithanian spires? Are they like our furnace? People are, are nice to us, but Dad says there's no foreigners like that. But the teachers here are so nice. Students come and go, but she always managed to get them to return. But this time, no one came. Oh? Oh, it's him. General Theresis. Your Highness, I... You! The ult of the stone knife hits the boy in the chest. Although unable to break free, the boy strains to look up at the tall, gaunt girl who has just pinned him down. I saw General Teresa come this way. I just wanted to... Teresa, your highness, you're here too. The classroom, are you teaching? Put the knife down, Ascalon. Your highness, you were looking for me? Yes, I came to seek an answer for the children who lost their parents. I know the military commission will take care of them, as it took care of me, but will this change anything? What if another war comes? I want to change things, but I don't know what I can change, or what I should change. The two rulers gaze upon the fearless child, each arriving at their own answer inside. What's your name? Manfred. Who's Manfred? Dad, we've been standing at the door forever. Why can't we go in? Mommy's hurt very badly. She needs some quiet to rest. We shouldn't bother her. But I miss Mom. Daddy misses her too, but not now. We'll go home together once I come back. Where are you going, Dad? I have to leave the city for a bit. To make the people who hurt Mommy pay. Stay here with Mommy and wait for Daddy. Can you stay, Daddy? 
we'll figure out a way to make mommy better, I promise. Do you like mommy's name? Oda? Yes, it sounds very nice. It's your name now. But I'll teach you to fight the bad guys with mommy's weapon once I get back. Okay, I'll beat up the bad guys who hurt mommy. But I'll but will beating up the bad guys make her feel better? You'll understand someday, Oda. I'll be back. Wait for me. Good luck turns around towards the crystal-infested city wall. The only thing left that ties him to the city is Oda. Oda and Oda. I let a few get away as you bid me. What next? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, man, that's fucked up. War is awful. In everything. The war is always just bad. Obviously, and for reasons like that, and it's like a lot of times, like in the case of Lithania attacking them, it was just the nobles that wanted the war, not the people that actually went to fight, and then forcing people to fight, it's not good. <laughs> and they had to fight, oh shit, they had to fight for their survival, so they ended up dying in the process, which is awful. This, uh, this is a sad story. I am enjoying it, though. It's the first one I've liked in a while, really, for when it comes to the events. Um, I've been told many times that it's a prequel to Rhodes Island. Babel becomes Rhodes Island later, which makes sense why the doctor's there and Kaltit's there and... What's her name? I can't think of her name right now. But yeah, this is a lot of fun. I'm enjoying this story a lot. Um, I'm very excited to read more of it because I'm interested to see what happens. It's sad, though. Um, but that is war. <laughs> uh, so if you like this video, like and subscribe. I love having you guys around. If you want to talk some about the game, join the Discord. It's a, the link will be in the description, and I'm in there more often than I am in the comments. So it's the best way to get a hold of me. <laughs> if you want to support the channel, the Ko-Fi will also be in the description. If you want to buy me a coffee, I'd appreciate it a lot. Um, other than that, though, you better have a good night. And bye-bye!